Hello, welcome back to the fish locker for the very first time out on new boat. <laughs> out on the new boat. Do a quick look around. This is what we're doing. This is literally the first time that I've been out on the boat. So I've come out to try one or two of the offshore wrecks. I'm just mapping it out now because it's the first time that I've used this, uh, <laughs> these electronics as well. So I'm just mapping out the wreck. And we'll see about doing a couple of drifts maybe with some lures and hopefully put the anchor down this is um, this is a day for me to learn how to use my new boat <laughs> it truly is incredible when this happens i've been here about 30 seconds and there's a pod of dolphins showed up that to me is a good sign Literally, I was just trying to set the camera up and I could just hear psh, psh, that was it. I will show you, I will cover up the position, but that is mapping the wreck there. On the left hand side I've got a GPS and on the right hand side I have the wreck showing on the echo sounder. For anybody who wants to know how to anchor a wreck, I have a video already on the channel. I will tag it into the description of here. The first drift all I'm going to do is I'm going to try and drift over with some baited feathers. Now I came out, I, used, I was using sabikis earlier on which is just tiny mackerel feathers and I caught a couple of poor cod. So I've caught a set of mackerel feathers down to three and I'm just using a little bit of poor cod. Trying to catch pouting, whiting, anything like that that I'm going to use for catching ling and conger. Then after I've had a drift, after I've had a drift with that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to try fishing with one of these. Now these are Storm 360 Biscay Minnows. Now I use them quite a lot inshore, the really small ones, the 30 grams, the 46 grams. These are heavier, these are fishing offshore, you can see by the size of them. And I'm just fishing it direct to a... Uh, this is, I've actually had this rod in the garage for ages. Uh, I've, I've never used it because I've never had a reel to fit it. But I'm going to try one of my new class reels on this rod. So yeah, fingers crossed. If it doesn't snap, <laughs> it'd be great. I've had it in the garage for ages, like over a year. Going through, sorting through all my fishing gear. I was thinking, I don't need all this, do I? Sorting through, it was like, ooh, yeah. That's a bit shiny, that one. I'll keep that one. So yeah, we'll get the drift sorted. Got a period of wind against tide. So I've got the wind coming this way and the tide going that way. I got here a little bit earlier than I expected just because this boat goes a little bit faster than I expected. So we will mess around for a little bit until the tide sorts out what it wants to do and then we'll see about putting the anchor on. A lot of rope. A lot, a lot of rope. I've had to connect two coils together. We've just reached the bottom. And it's the end of my first coil. Let's get it sat back at anchor. There's my anchor boy. I've got all the rope out. This is going to be an experiment. <laughs> it's the first time I've anchored this boat. I don't know exactly how much rope I need to put out. Usually you put two and a half times the depth of rope. I have got a decent length of chain on there. Hopefully this will work first time but yeah it's not uncommon to have to re-anchor two or three times just when you've not got exactly wind and tide together see there as it's swinging us round hopefully it'll swing us round onto the wreck hopefully it's all a learning experience today it's a learning experience every day every day is a school day Oh, 
just got back, just got sat back onto the wreck. I've just got sat back onto the wreck now. Dropped my feathers down, and I've immediately picked some up. Now to start with, it felt like a pouting, and then it ran. So I don't know if I've got a pouting and a pollock, or if I had a pouting and something's picked the pouting up. But yeah, it was like a little tiny rattling bite, and then when I struck into it and lifted, it just went. Zzz, zzz, zzz. So I'm not sure, cause cause I've got a set of feathers here. I'm not sure if I have a pouting and something else, or it was just a really weird biting pollock. Yeah, cause pouting aren't a diving fish. They aren't, they don't pull drag off. I don't know if you can see that fish coming at the back there. But flipping heck. Well, <laughs> the first proper fish was a proper one. That's a double hookup of a pollock and a pouting. But caught on mackerel feathers, look, look at the size of the hook there. Can you believe that? <laughs> Now, unfortunately, the sun is behind me, so it's going to be—it's going to be a bit dark. But that is a fantastic fish. <laughs> yeah. And that was what we were after: pouting for conger bait. If there's some good pollock down there, I am going to drop down with this. I'm going to drop down with this lowering. Drop down with that lure and give it a go. <laughs> but yeah, you believe that? That is a fantastic pollock. To catch it on feathers as well. I told you I'd got like a little tiny bite, didn't I? And all of a sudden it just went... That was the pollock. So I'd got the pouting, lifted the pouting off the bottom. Then when the pollock had seen it, it went for it as well. We are sat back quite nice onto the wreck here. I hope we stay here. There's a fish. Oh, missed it. Ah, oh, missed it. Fishing in 82 metres of water. That was brilliant with that pollock. I just said, didn't I? I just said, I probably it's picked up a pouting and then I picked up a pollock. I'm gonna, like I said, this is purely an experimentation day. I haven't even worked out properly where I'm gonna put the cameras. <laughs> Brilliant! Thinking about it. Oh, it's come off. Oh, it should have. See the teeth marks? 
chuck the hook just back there it might even rise up ah. <laughs> Yeah, that fish might even rise up now. While we're sat nice on the wreck like this, and I have a little bit of bait, I am going to drop down with a ling rig. Don't know how long I'm going to be sat like this for, so I'm going to put a ling rig on and I'm going to try to drop a ling rig down. If we can sit like this for a while, I'll put some conga baits down as well. Now all I've done is got a, I've got a one hook wrecking rig with a bit of that pouting fillet on. We're sat right on top of the wreck now, so I'm hoping to drop that down into the wreck. Well, for the first proper fish, that was a good fish. I am, happy. I am very happy with that. I've managed to get us anchored, kind of like diagonal across. Now the current is going that way, and the wreck is round there. So that's perfect, because that means that the current will be taking the centre of my bait into the wreck and bringing the fish out. The pollock, they live above it, the pollock and the crawfish. The ling and the conga, they live right in the wreck. The problem that I've got here is because, because my lead's not really heavy enough to keep it in one position. Because we've got a lot of depth and quite a bit of tide still. It can pick the lead up and it can snag you up. So I don't want to give it too much line because it might, it might deposit it right inside the wreck, it might properly snag it up from it. Just drop down with a cuttlefish bait. Some really inky cuttlefish. And it's immediately getting quite a lot of attention, I don't know if you can see the bites on it. Now this is a lighter rod. So you can see the fact this will be pouting but it's not a bad thing getting pouting feeding. You get the fish feeding and they start chewing up the bait and they create more of a scent trail. I think what I might have to do now is because we are in the big push of the tide. I might daisy chain two leads up and send the rest of that pouting down. If the pouting are all there feeding, they won't eat another pouting. So I can send that down. I bet if I sent my feathers down now, it would come up with two pouting on straight away. Let's see about doing that. Ooh. I do love deep water wreck fishing like this. There's the potential of it being a monster. That's it, big ling, big conga, big pollock, big coalfish. That fish had had three goes at that. Trying to bring it up really slowly. Not only to make it more fun, to enjoy myself, but also because if you bring them up really fast, they're gonna blow, they're gonna pop, they're gonna, their swim bladder's gonna go. Whereas if I bring it up slowly, there is a chance that it might go back. Albeit a very slim chance in 82 metres of water. 
that's been one of the things that's been difficult to get used to with this new boat. My old sounder was in feet and I haven't figured out how to change this one to feet yet. So I was used to dealing with things in feet. Now I'm after I had to figure out the anchor rope in meters rather than feet. There you go. Perfect. It's a fine eating sized pollock. Oh, tell you what, that wasn't coming out. Brilliant. Tell you what, these have absolutely nailed it for me, like inshore, the small ones. Just goes to show that the big ones are just as good offshore as well. Yeah, the, uh, I'll get the packet. Three sixty coastal Biscay deep minnow in one hundred and twenty seven gram. Yeah. Usually I fish them in like thirty, to thirty or forty six gram, just when I'm in shore. But that's in like sixty feet of water. I'll get that dispatched. He has his belly swelled up a bit. He has blown. I'll get him dispatched. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I completely forgot I had this rod. I bought it for going fishing in Norway for coal fish, and the Norway trip got cancelled. And I just put it in the put it in <laughs> put it in the garage and completely forgot about it. I do always hold out a little tiny bit of hope that there might be a monkfish sat next to one of these wrecks. You just never know. <laughs> Monkfish or a big turbot or something like that. Sat next to the sat next to the feature, sat next to the structure, try and get a bit of shelter. I love imagining what's going on down there. Battery change. It's a weird one. I think there must be a piece of rope over the net, over the wreck. Yeah, there's definitely. Definitely a piece of ghost fishing gear there or something. Got it back, yay! So there, just a little bit of patience. Just got the glove on, just gently felt it out. And yeah, it was, I could feel it pulling through something like an old piece of net. Oh, there's a fish. Now oh, I picked up one of the other lines. There's a pout in on the slow jig. Stick that around a bit of water and get this untangled. What a lovely day! Honestly, you couldn't ask for better, could you? Just do with a nice sling and a big conger to round it off. Thank you. 
Yeah. Big fat pouting on the jig. I'll get him dispatched and I'll change those baits over, get some fresh baits down there. Just changed one of the baits over, just dropped it down and reeled the other one in. And the rods just started going crazy. Oh, I'm all puffed out. I was trying to get the reel, trying to get that rod reeled in real quick. Must just be somewhat small. Somewhat there. Because I felt it had hold of it and then let go. But it must just be something small. Whoa! Get a drink in me real quick. I'm terrible for doing that. Bail all day. Still going mad. There's always something to do. Like you're always baiting up or you're always sorting something out or tidying or moving or. And then you forget you haven't drunk any water, especially on a red hot day like today. That's one of those go big or go home baits. Hopefully with a bait that size, the pouting won't touch it. It'll just pull up a big conga. There's quite a few jellyfish around. Really nice looking ones. Oh. Now that, see the bite there? That's got to be a proper fish. Surely. Of the rod over the side if I'm not careful. Yeah, there were some proper bites. Still nothing. There's a big piece of structure there because I can feel it banging as it drops down it. Be very lucky if we don't end up getting snagged here. I just said to myself, I just said, oh, I'll reel these in and we'll go and re anchor. And just as I went to go and reel in, the rod hooked over. So I didn't even know this one was there. Yeah, right on slack water. I didn't even know this fish was there. A nice big link. There's the hook look, just in the top of the mouth. You see this that's sticking out? 
that is what I was talking about when I said that some fish blow. Go on, that, that hook. There you go. When I was saying that some fish suffer with barotrauma and they blow, that's what that was. The air in its swim bladder, as it came up from the seabed, didn't have enough time to equalise. So it's blown up. So even though this even though this fish is thrashing around, it's dead. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in this bucket here and bleed it off. But yeah, that's that's a good ling that. Just what we're wanting. Calm yourself down. And just in time. Like I gotta say, I was just reeling the rods in because I was like, ah, oh, slack water, I was swinging about. Just in time. Didn't even know it was there. Didn't register a bite or anything. And just as I wound down to bring the line in, I lifted into it and the fish was there. Brilliant. In fact, actually, we have everything we need now. I might. I might haul the anchor up and just go for a bit of a steam around. A good ling, good pollock, and a lovely day's fishing. Right, I've tidied down and let's get the anchor up. One of the things that I would like to try and impress on you is the fact that um, keep tidy, tidy as you go. When you're pulling up the anchor, shooting and hauling an anchor are one of the most dangerous things that you can be doing as a small boater. So you want to have everything clear off the deck. All the fishing rods are all stored away. I've got two stored up here and one tied down the side there. Everything that I don't need is out of my way. Just so that I'm not going to trip on anything. I'm not going to get caught on anything. Keep it simple. Take it easy. Be safe. Well, that's been fantastic. I have, uh, I've had a lovely first trip out on the boat. Some nice eating fish. I'm not going to fish anymore because if I catch any more ling or any more pollock, it's more than what we can eat. It's more than what we need. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to have a leisurely steam back home. If I see anything worth putting in, I'll put it in. If I don't, then I won't. I hope you've enjoyed joining me. I am going to do more videos about the boat when I get used to using it, when I know how to use it properly, when I've got everything where I like it. I hope you've enjoyed joining me. All the very best. See you later.